Today's episode is going to be all about the rules of 7018 electrodes and when can we break them. Now, if we take a look at the classification for the E7018 electrode, we know there's a lot of information when it comes to these numbers, and it tells you of what rules that we're going to end up breaking today that say it right here in the classification. More specifically, we're going to be looking at the Lincoln Electric Excalibur 7018H4R. We all should know that the E stands for the electrode. The 70 is in 70 thousandths as far as the tensile strength and PSI. Now, as far as the one goes, Typically, this is usually a one or a two, the two being flat and horizontal only, but the one being an all position electrode. That means flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. However, this rod really likes vertical up, but doesn't like vertical down. So when you start running down, it doesn't really recommend it. A lot of welding procedures are gonna tell you that that's not gonna be the case. You shouldn't do it, and a lot of welding instructors and a lot of welding schools are teaching uphill only. Now, when it comes to this number eight, that's gonna more specifically talk about the type of flux that's on that electrode. This is gonna be more classified as a low hydrogen type of electrode. Now, that means that hydrogen, AKA water, well, there's hydrogen in water, and that's where we're gonna find most of the hydrogen in our world. These specific electrodes don't want any hydrogen in them, so you typically wanna keep them in an oven. Now these Excaliburs are really nice because they have this little classification at the end of it that helps us know the amount of hydrogen that is diffusible in 100 grams of weld deposit. So this one is four milliliters of diffusible hydrogen per 100 grams. And this R will stand for moisture resistance. So there are rods as far as 7018s, they're gonna tell you that, hey, these are moisture resistant. There's a certain time they're allowed to be outside of an oven. Uh, and if they are outside of an oven for an X amount of time, how long do you have to bake them? What temperature do you have to bake them in order to get that hydrogen out and make them weld quality again? But the main rules that we're gonna try to break today are going to be, can you weld a 7018 downhill? Can you weld it on different polarities like AC or DCEN? And lastly, what happens if the rods are a little moist? Is it that big a deal? Now coming over to our good old fashioned stallion right here, the Typhoon 230. You've seen this machine do a lot of stuff as far as TIG. Today we're really gonna play with the stick features. But one of those rules that the 7018 is always taught is you should probably be running DC EP, DC positive for all of the welding. Now, that means your electrode is plugged into the positive terminal and your ground is into the negative. We're gonna go ahead and flip the little dog and put it on DCEN or DC straight polarity. We're gonna keep it at about the same amperages. Now, why would anyone wanna switch the polarities? Because DCEP just welds way smoother like this. Where DCEN, it just doesn't seem to wanna to flow. It has a very obvious sound a lot like this. which tends to make the welds look a little bit different. So why on earth would you want to switch to DCEN for 7018? Believe it or not, a lot of open root procedures exist with DCEN polarity for your 7018s in order to put, like I said, an open root in. We got the machine on DCEN, uh, 90 amps, nothing crazy. The reason why it's being used a little bit more for open root is the fact of the flow of the electricity. As far as DCEP, we've got 70% of our heat coming off the tip of here and 30% into the base metal, uh, which really leads for a real diggy rod, if you will. Now, if we switch the polarity, we've got the reverse to that. We've got 30% of the heat coming from the electrode tip and 70% of that heat roughly into our plate, which is gonna allow us to still get penetration, but have a little bit less dig in that rod. But we're gonna try to give it a go. We got it on DCEN already. 90 amps is pretty common for what happens as far as what I run on flat plate. I don't know what it's gonna do for an open route, but we're gonna play around with this machine and see if we can't get something successful as far as getting to a good results for full penetration. It just feels wrong. We're gonna to try to keep a really tight arc length Kind of like we would if we were doing any other open route. I've got a tight 332nd land in here and about another 332nd land and gap closer to the 16th or the gap. DC straight. Open route 7018. 
I see a key hole the whole time, so I think it's in there. Really don't think it's turning out half bad. We're getting a keyhole. I'm getting fusion on the back. It's starting to kind of thin up a little bit, get a little bit tighter as we come up. I might wish I had a little bit more control over my heat. I think we can do a couple more things with this Typhoon. Okay, now we're about to get a bit crazy with it. We're gonna go over to the AC stick. Yeah, I said AC stick. Now we can do it with these settings or we can even go into DC or AC TIG and run it like this. So you can actually use the foot pedal and the high frequency start with those same settings. I mean, it, TIG and stick are constant current, so why can't it work? Now we've got the machine set to AC. We've got frequency and balance set. We're running a foot pedal. We got high frequency start. And I mean, this is all really just for fun, right? It, at the end of the day, what polarity do you run? Each rod manufacturer, regardless if it's 7018, they're all 7018. They're gonna have specific ones that might run DCEP only. Some of them run both AC and DCEP. Some of them are good to weld all of them. Uh, it's something that you have to look into the rod manufacturer as well. So as far as this goes, let's try to put in an open route. I've got even more amperage than I need. I got 120 amps compared to the 90, but I've got a foot pedal, so I should be able to control it. High frequency start all the way down. You can hear that buzz. Oh man, that's kind of nice. Dude, that's just soaking in. Oh my Lanta, that is nice. I'm just stomping on this foot pedal right now. And it's just buzzing in a bead. Now I want to stop, I just come off the foot pedal. Now that's not exactly the root pass I want to be seeing on there. That was all the AC that we were just playing with. The best bead we got is the start. If we could get everything to look like that, that was with just DC EN only. Not playing with anything crazy. When it comes to welding 7018 on the wrong polarity, let us know if you've ever had to weld 7018 on DC, in or AC, and for what reasons. The next thing we're gonna get into is whether or not you should be welding 7018 uphill or downhill. Now when it comes to vertical or downhill progression with the 7018, the procedure is gonna specify that this rod's gonna be either weld welded up and probably never in any other position. Now if there isn't a WPS, when can you run this thing downhill? Because as we weld uphill, We've seen it, it welds nice and smooth, it's a good climber, the slag carries in the right spot, it all just kind of hangs out and then the slag's easy to remove and you've got yourself a solid bead. Whereas if you've ever tried to strike something up on downhill with the same amperage and try to run down, you'll notice that slag tends to get ahead of you, it starts to be really drippy, you've got to try to hold a tighter arc length and if you go far away it really wants to fall away. Everything just wants to roll and drop and flop. So when can you actually run this rod downhill? I think the answer is pretty simple. The answer to the when can you weld 7018 downhill is when there's no code work involved and if you're welding some thin metals. For example, I've got this piece of square tubing with the end cap I need done and I've got this piece of uh, pipe. Both of them are about an eighth of an inch thickness in all the material all the way around. Uh, the best advice I could give you is just run it hot, run it fast. Keep a really close arc length and man, it welds really good. The biggest trouble with welding downhill 7018 is the fact that you're gonna have more of a likelihood to catch incomplete fusion or porosity or just even rolling over that slag. We'll just play pretend like this is a piece of tubing stuck in position and we can't weld it, you know, anywhere else, can't roll it or anything. So we're just gonna weld it where it is. And if I were to try to go up with it, I'll probably put a hole in it. So we're gonna try to go down and not. That's the type of stuff that I would do in the field on thin metals like that and that if I absolutely had to. We're welding that stuff down.
Now remember guys, all of this stuff so far, as far as working with a different polarity or changing the direction and welding, look at the WPS, look at the rod manufacturer, what they say that you should be doing. Now, can you be doing those other things? It's all just circumstantial. Which leads me to my third and final thing is, can you weld with a wet 7018, even though we're allowed pretty much no hydrogen in those rods? It's been raining a little bit at my house. It just kind of slowed down, but you can still see that this table is nice and wet. I've had these rods sitting on that table and in the rain. And if that, if you still don't believe me, the rods are wet, okay? Nice and wet. Now, should you weld with these? The easy answer is no. No, 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 you should not. You should definitely not weld with these. You should just toss them out. But, can we still get use out of them? Yes. Yes, to an extent. I'll show you what you gotta do. Now again, if you're doing code work, throw those rods out. Don't use them, don't use them at all, okay? Now, ideally what you'd do if you really wanted to get some use out of those is you'd go put them in a rod oven, okay? You gotta get them up to the boiling point, about 215 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, whatever. Get them up to the boiling port and you gotta bake out the water, AKA baking out that hydrogen. Now, if you really wanna get some use out of them, you can just kinda get, a, get them all wiped down real quick, stick them in your stinger and just stick them to your workpiece. That electricity going th through there is gonna bake out whatever moisture was in there. Once you see that it's kind of stopped smoking, probably baked out some of that moisture. Now, I wouldn't say with that much moisture, that's what you should be doing, but if you have some rods that have been left out, just sitting open on a table, no, nothing's gotten them wet, but they've been sitting out and they just seem like they're welding a little funny, give them a little preheat, and they usually weld a little bit better. You can run into a lot of issues with welding with a wet rod, like porosity, uh, but the biggest issue is the hydrogen embrittlement that you're putting into this weld. We're introducing water or that hydrogen into a weld and with this rod being a low hydrogen electrode it doesn't want that and what that'll end up doing is cause cracking later on. Now if you're building Popal's fence or if, you know you're just building some little angle iron and sheet metal stuff and you use some wet electrodes, you're probably not gonna have too much of an issue. Again, doesn't mean you should, but you could. Well, I hope you all really enjoyed this episode. I like doing stuff like this, a little experimenting, a little explanation. And again, 7018 rods, when it comes to those three things, welding downhill, welding on the different polarity other than positive, and welding with a wet electrode, can you do it? Sure. The uh, real answer is, should you be? We'll see you on the next weld. And or some of those rules. No, 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 no. But it's going all the way through, but that keyhole is getting crazy. What you doing in here, dog? Scared of the thunder and lightning? I definitely missed, missed that totally.